Good morning. I'm gonna wait a little bit, see if anybody comes on, pops on. It is eight o'clock on the dot, central time. Like I said yesterday, I wanna celebrate myself for being on time. Okay, let's start off like that. All right, well, let's jump into it. Hey, Chica, hey, Brittany, how you doing? Um, so, I don't know if anyone catch my live or if you tuned in yesterday, but yesterday I announced that I will be going live at eight o'clock. I'm good, how are you? First of all, I've been seeing you and your new brand, or it's, we're gonna have to talk, cause I'm trying, I wanna know a little bit more about the brand you've been representing lately. Um, uh, oh, that's good, okay. <laughs> So basically, I'm going live every morning at 8 o'clock. Okay, cool. At 8 o'clock um, Central Time, okay, uh, every morning to discuss business, okay, from an accounting or a CPA's perspective. Um, there have been a lot of things that I have learned over the past couple of years, well, after, <laughs> over my entire career <laughs> about business in general from being um, a consultant at KPMG to then being internal audit at United Airlines and then being CFO at um, Chromix. There's been a lot of things I've been learning over the past few years, especially in um, my current role. I'm also an independent contractor and consultant um, for an independent um, CPA firm down here um, in te Houston, Texas. So that's been an awesome experience and seeing so many different entrepreneurs and seeing some common struggles and some not so common um, struggles, seeing some common wins and some not so common wins. I've been learning a lot about business and entrepreneurship, especially me now being in my own entrepreneurship journey. It's been teaching me a lot. And so I want to share. I want to share these things every morning. Also, I am now going to be um, opening or launching a financial practice of my own soon. Okay. And this will allow entrepreneurs due to poor connection. Hopefully I'm back in. Um, but this will allow entrepreneurs um, a chance to come and consult with me to find out what you don't know, you know, because a lot of entrepreneurs don't know what they don't know. And so, especially from a financial perspective, I'm not going to consult on my marketing. I'm not going to consult on copyright. I'm not going to consult on sales. Okay, that's not my forte. But accounting and operations, yes, ma'am, that's, that's what I'm here for. So, anything you need to know from that perspective, and a, just a holistic personal development perspective as well. Um, that has always been my thing. That has always been my brand. I love everything self-growth, okay? And entrepreneurship, I feel like you're only as good of an entrepreneur as you are a whole person. And I feel like you can only develop in your career as much as you're personally developing on yourself. So I just want people to keep that in mind with these things that I'm, I discuss every morning. But this morning, we're going to be talking about five things I believe every aspiring or new entrepreneur should know um, prior to or during business while they're building their brand, while they're building their business. So the first thing that I want to talk about, I'm going to get right into it, okay? The first thing I'm going to talk about is... Um, Cat, hmm, let's see. Oh, yes. Cash is king. Okay? Cash is king. You do not, okay, don't want to manage your, your expenses in your head, okay? Don't do it. Cash flow management is vital and is the lifeblood of every single business. I don't care what you say. If there is no cash, you have no business. Okay, so during the pandemic, you saw the businesses that got out. <laughs> like, you saw the businesses that couldn't make it. 
I, I bet nine times out of ten, those businesses that didn't make it through the pandemic, through economic hard times, through um, 2008, all of those business had cash flow problems. Okay? When things start getting tight in a business, right? And something happens in the economy that you do not anticipate. For example, um, Facebook ads. Okay? Hello? We're talking business this morning. Um, I'm talking about five things every entrepreneur or aspiring entrepreneur should know while building their business. So, first thing is cash is king, okay? When, an act, when a hardship comes that you cannot control, for example, COVID, the minute that this thing happened, Lord, let me not say that word because I'm about to put this on YouTube and I don't want to get demonetized, Lord, because we're trying to do both. Okay, the, the, what, what's the, the panorama? Let's use the panor panorama. When the panorama, okay, occurred, occurred, you know, it, um, it took some people out. Why? One, they did not have the cash flow necessary to deal with an economic time, okay, where the money was not inflowing, okay? So that means they were already on thin ice, you know, just barely making it by, you know, probably. And there's many reasons why cash could be limited. So I don't blame anyone, but because their business may have already been on the rocks where inflow of cash was not, you know, coming in as much. There could be, um, uh like you're not using your funds appropriately or not tracking your funds appropriately there's so many different things and i don't want to blame anybody but at the end of the day the businesses that made it and thrive were ones who were able to find the cash flow to keep operations going even when sales were down okay the beauty of e-commerce brands is that they actually had a flux of influx of like cash flow coming in which was a blessing that no one anticipated but everything has to go e-commerce during that time okay now the brick and board the brick and mortar stores were the ones that suffered because they had all these overhead expenses but no people coming into those brick and border mortar places to transact with them and therefore their inflow of cash suffered while their expenses stayed the same okay now if you're like a walmart or so who is a cash king like they got cash for days Walmart ain't going out of business. I don't see within the next 50 to 100 years, if if that. Some, they would, something have to go terribly wrong, right? Because they got so much cash. They just sitting on, you know what I mean? And, of course, you want to be, you know, you don't want to hold cash as much, eh, you know, but you need to have enough reserves to operate a business. So that's something to anticipate because there are things that are going to come up that you won't anticipate. Even e-commerce brands, they got happy you know, during the influx, when every the rush to e-commerce happened and everybody was stuck in the house and they were buying and, and, you know, that was all they could do. You know, some people got spoiled. Some people relied on Facebook ads and then saw how shaky it got when the presidential season hit. And then all of a sudden you got all these presidential candidates, all these government, can all these politicians flooding the space or Facebook changing the rules because of all the politicians and now your ads have been flooded out. Now you're not getting the conversions and the engagement that you used to get, that you used to rely on during that time. And now you are gravely, you know, not hitting your numbers. And this is happening for a lot of the different e-commerce brands and they're not, they weren't hitting their numbers during a certain period but they 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 relied on hitting these forecasted numbers to say oh we're good we can spend xyz on xyz okay so when and or not track cash because you when you see a big large amount of money in the bank human psychology is to be like oh we're good we don't need to worry about anything cool spend it send it whatever you know and what ends up happening is when the hard times come you're one paycheck away from being out of you're one payroll cycle out away from being out of business 
okay so that is something to keep in mind cash is king so make sure you have someone appropriately doing cash flow management for them for you i recommend an accountant okay because we know the tools to to responsibly um create budgets and break even analyses and all of these different things so if you don't know how to do that, I recommend you get somebody you trust to come in and help you manage your cash flow because you cannot manage it in your head, especially if you're dealing with thousands of transactions a month. Just stop, okay? All right, so the next thing I wanna talk about is on the lines of, you know, cash flow is king, you never want to wait until you need the money to borrow money. What I mean by that? A lot of times, you know, when you're doing well, a bank comes around, you know, things are great, things are popping. Banks want your money because they want to lend off of your money, okay? All right. So, human psychology, you know, us learning finance, personal finance or whatever the case may be, you're like, hey, you don't get a loan unless you need one, right? That that's 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 what our our psychology is from a personal perspective, right? Debt is bad, et cetera, et cetera. This is not necessarily the case. Hello, good morning. Um, this is not necessarily the case. So debt is not always bad. How you use debt is what where the the meat and the bones are okay so i recommend never using debt when you need it because <laughs> if you really really need it then you you can't afford it at that moment you're 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 leveraging someone else's money to afford something that you're just, you're just creating a hole for yourself um but when you when things are great you can leverage someone else's money to expand to grow to 5x that those funds and that's what banks are depending on you to do so that's why they're really prone and really um a lot more um happy to lend during times when your business is thriving okay i recommend taking the cash if you can afford it you know if you've had a sustainable business you've seen a few tough seasons you've seen seasonality a whole year or two you know you know how your business ebbs and flows and if you're on the path of growth if a bank comes and says hey we'll lend you a line of credit of da 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 da, da, da. i say take it because you never know what's gonna happen for one and for two that is an opportunity for you to leverage cash that you don't have that's not taking away from your equity to grow, to expand, to make investments, etc. Now, when you're in a bind, as many people have been, when the cash flow is low, then you're like, okay, to stay in business, I need cash. Basically, spending is down consumerism is down i'm not getting i can't depend on sales to drive the amount of cash that i need to stay in business let me go get a loan okay so you go shopping for loans okay you go shopping for credit cards you go shopping for all these things now businesses are looking at you like a risk because they're like hold on you can't afford this money and now you're panicking, now you're stressed. Now you're more than likely gonna take something that is not in the best interest of your business. It's very costly. You're gonna get a costly short-term loan. Um, and I could go into detail in further lives about different loan options that there are out there for businesses that are in these positions. Um, but a lot of times you're gonna get a loan that is very expensive and now you're gonna be a business living loan to loan to loan, you know, which is not the ideal space. The ideal space is to be in a place where you're sitting pretty with cash, okay? Another issue that you're gonna run into, let's say you were not doing accounting, like getting a diligent accounting program in place at the very beginning. And I'm gonna also do another live, I'm thinking of all these ideas, I'm gonna do another live about why it's important to bring an accountant on in the beginning closer to the beginning of your journey as opposed to the end because 
What happens is when you need a loan or when you need funding or you have an investor come, right? Because you need money. You have all these big ideas. You want to grow, da, da, da. And then you're like, oh, I need an influx of cash to do these things. I need somebody else's cash, okay? A lot of times they're going to be like, okay, let me see your P&Ls. I want to see them for this period. I want to see them month to month. I want to see how you're performing over the year so that I can get a gauge of seasonality and how you perform during these times where seasonality. Financial statements. Yes, you need the financials. They're going to ask you, um, a lot of banks ask you, let me see your inventory on the books. And if you're not tracking inventory, guess what? You have no inventory on the books. So they're like, hey, we can't loan anything to you if you ain't got no inventory. Mind you, you got a warehouse full of millions of dollars of inventory, but you're not tracking it. Okay, so these things pop up and then last minute you're like, oh, hell, let me find an accountant. I need this next week. Then the accountant comes in, whoop the doo doo. Okay, you hire a deal. Yeah, can you give me some financial statements in a week? Uh, <coughs> excuse me, ma'am. Let me explain this to you. Okay, I understand you do, it's fine. You did not go to school for accounting. I don't, don't expect you to know all that goes in to, you know, producing financial statements. However, for me to categorize all the activity that has happened in your business, I would have to, for one, take maybe two weeks to a month just understanding what you're spending money on and when and where and how. Why does it take so long, you may ask? Because I gotta comb through two, three years of transactions. That means that that purchase that you made at Burger King in 2019, in October 3rd, I need to know why you made it at Burger King. Think about how many of those you have done. I need to know about all the inventory transactions that you have, heard, have had. Let's say you purchase stuff on Amazon. Okay, what did you purchase on Amazon? Amazon has a lot of different things you can purchase there. That's the difference between something being an asset, something being... Um, uh, a, a cost of goods sold and that may, may mean nothing to you but those are two different financials that we're talking about one is going on a balance sheet one is going on a P&L so I don't want to put something on a P&L that belongs on a balance sheet because now your investor going to be like huh what what this looks weird okay and that wasn't even the reality of your business so all of these things take time Especially if you didn't keep record, then you're not going to know what happened in 2019 on October 3rd. You're going to be like, huh? You expect me to know this? What can I do, ma'am? My hands are tied, right? Because the bit you're trying to bring an accountant in a little bit too late. So those are things that I feel like you should know before, you know, you let, you know, before, like things to think about as you're processing, okay, when should I bring an accountant when should I take a loan? When should I go for credit cards? What, you know, et cetera, et cetera, okay? The third thing I want people to know is that you have to develop a creativity muscle. Things are going to pop off. Things are going to happen out of your control, okay? Panoramics happen, okay, all right? Um, campaigns happen, okay? Um, legislation happens. Things outside of your control, hurricanes happen, tornadoes happen, all types of things, earthquakes happen. So many things happen that you cannot anticipate and control for. You know, even in your own life, sickness, health, like issues, all these things that you cannot control happen, right? And when they do, if things went so honky dory in the beginning and you never got a chance, to learn how to be, get, get a little scrappy and figure things out on the fly, it's going to hurt you when you have thousands of dollars in your hands and in a staff that is depending on the next payroll to feed their family. So it is important to not avoid necessarily or run away from hardships, but learn how to face them. Learn how to get creative. Learn how to make money out of nowhere. Learn how to network. 
learn how to utilize and work your network okay there's so many things that you have to like build a muscle for in entrepreneurship and, and me included these this is my weak area think sometimes when things get a little flustered or a little i freeze up i freak out i'm instantly in panic mode and you can't be creative in panic mode Okay, you have to be free flowing. So that's something that has to be built. That's a muscle that has to be built over time for you to grow and maintain a thriving business. Okay, so that's something I just wanted to hit on real, real quick. It's one of those personal development things. Um, four, you want to plan for state and local taxes. Okay, okay. All right, by state and local taxes, I don't just mean income taxes. I mean franchise tax, I mean sales tax. <laughs> and that's the biggest thing. Number five is gonna be sales tax. A lot of you on Shopify may or may not be aware of something called Nexus, okay? There are two different types of Nexus. There is physical Nexus and there is economic Nexus. All right, because of the rise of e-commerce, the government was getting hit to, hey, you're not charging sales tax to these people from, because Walgreens, you ain't gonna leave Walgreens without part charging sales tax, okay? They're gonna, hi Maria, how are you? I am basically talking about um, five things every entrepreneur should know. I'm gonna review the points um, just real quick. First is cash, cash is king. You have to have sustainable cash flow to operate a business, especially during hard times when you don't know what's gonna pop off. Um, two, you never want to wait until you actually need a loan to take one or need debt to take it, you know, because at that point you can't afford it. Now you're risky as um, as some a lendee. Now, you know, but when you're when things are good, a more a, um, a bank is more apt to loan you something um, and you have access to extra capital to go leverage and go grow your business. Um, three, you got to develop a muscle of creativity. There are going to be times that comes out of nowhere that you cannot control. It's going to be political campaigns. It's going to be panoramics that happen. There are going to be, you know, financial crises that happen, earthquakes, tornadoes that happen that can threaten your business and threaten your business model. And if you're not used to cre exercising creativity muscles to learn how to navigate those hard times, then that's what's going to hurt you in the long run. The fourth thing I said was plan for state and local taxes. I don't want you to get to the end of the year and get hit with a letter from your state saying, hey, you owe franchise tax. Or if you're operating in multiple states, let's say you have employees in multiple states, right? And they hit you with the, um, you have not been withholding payroll tax for these people, or you haven't been playing the unemployment bill for these people, or you know, you owe franchise taxes in this. If you're a business that was not already doing the proper accounting or whatever the case may be to manage cash flow and to plan for these things that come up, that's stuff that could take out your business, whether you like it or not, especially if they go back, back, back into the years and be like, okay, you owe us for this period from this long period of time, okay? And how did Al Capone go down? He went down with the taxes, okay? So they're not playing about their coins. They will catch up to you. The fifth thing along that line that I'm talking about is look out for sales tax. That's a big thing. So if you're an e-commerce brand, Shopify is now reporting. Well, let me take that back. I don't know for sure if they're reporting, but they are tracking now people who hit their Nexus thresholds. I'm going to explain what Nexus is. Nexus is, okay, a state says, hey, if you're operating in my state, let's say you have a business in my state, your housing inventory. So for people selling on Amazon, Amazon has warehouses all over the US, okay? If one of their warehouses that they, let's say is fulfilled by Amazon, that you're, you're, you're um, selling fulfilled by Amazon, which means that Amazon is literally asking for all of your inventory and they're shipping it out to your clients. You're not responsible for shipping it out to your customers. So they have warehouses all over the US, 
okay, where they're housing your inventory to make it quicker and efficient for them to get the product to the end customer. If they are housing inventory in one of their warehouses in a whole, in Wyoming and you live in California, guess what? You owe Wyoming sales tax, okay? So you're either gonna pass that on to the consumer by charging them sales tax or you're just gonna take it, eat it all yourself. And sales tax could be 7%, 8%, then you got local localities. It's really complex and each state does it very different. Each state has different nexus laws. The, the nexus law that you really should be concerned about and what Shopify is now making people more concerned about is the fact that they're reporting now when you have economic nexus. So you don't even have to physically be having inventory in another state. Shopify tracks who you ship stuff to and when, okay? And they're tracking how much is being shipped. Every state has different, and then I'm not gonna talk about sales tax and nexus a little bit more and probably another live too. But Shopify is gonna say, hey, in the state of Illinois, whatever, when you hit past $200,000 for that state in inventory that you ship to that state, now you owe Nexus, okay? So Shopify is tracking that now. When they track stuff, now their IRS has a paper trail or that state has a paper trail because the state is the one who's gonna come after you for those sales tax. And a lot of states are desperate right now because of all of this stuff that has happened from the panoramic um, they're scrambling for cash. So the easiest way to go after cash is from these businesses who are operating on e-commerce platforms like Shopify. They say, hey, give us the reports, kind of like a W-2. Give us the reports of who made what in my state. And I'm going to be issuing letters from the moment that they hit that economic threshold. So let's say you hit it last year. They're gonna be like, hey, excuse me, thank you. Write me a check, okay? Matter of fact, file these returns, which is complicated in and of itself. But file these returns from last year, this month, all the way till now, or we're shutting down your, um, we're snatching your permit to sell in our state. And if you can't sell in a state, that can end your business. Okay, so I want you guys to be mindful of these things. If you guys have any questions, I know I've presented them a lot. And what I've been doing is I've been saving these lives, lives, posting them on YouTube. And as you may see, I had just released a synopsis of the live I did yesterday. So I'm doing the live and I'm doing the cliff note versions. If you follow me on YouTube, go to the link in my bio there you will see um every every day i'm hoping to post um a, the live that i do here on ig and also give you guys a cliff notes version if you want to share it to people but they really don't care to sit here and listen to a whole 30 40 minute live all right or if they just want a quick cliff notes version of everything that was spoken on i will be posting those there um, I will be posting a business day um, later. So this will be posted on Monday. So just keep that in mind. Hola, Rabina. I was just wrapping up the live. Basically, I'm going live at um, 8 o'clock a.m. Central Time, Monday through Friday. And I'm explaining different things that entrepreneurs should be aware of. Um, entre new entrepreneurs, aspiring entrepreneurs, things that you should be aware of from an accounting perspective. Um, today we talked about five things I think I believe every entrepreneur should know, but I will be posting these videos, these lives on YouTube, as well as a Cliff Notes version for the people that can't sit and listen to a 30 to 40 minute live, okay? So just keep that in mind. Hola! Um, and other than that, that's it. If you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out. Uh, to schedule a one-on-one -on -one. the first consultation is free okay so hit that link in the bio if you have any questions if you're building a new business you have all these questions about okay what should I be concerned about what should I you know book a um, session with me I will be launching the Celsi financial soon so be on the lookout for that um, and other than that have a great morning you guys I love y'all 
Great insights. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. It was so good working with you too. Go back and check the live that I did with Maria, the Money Life Coach. That was um, a tr truly insightful, informational live that I really, really loved. Um, but other than that, have a great morning, you guys. Alrighty. Bye-bye. You're welcome.